made a decision at quarterback? I'm not telling you. What made it a good practice? Uh, you know, guys came out here and worked. It's interesting. You know, you take the pads off. So today's was a was a spiders practice for us. Um, and you know, we you, you feel like hey, that might be a lag, but guys still hit some high speeds for us. Um, we were able to do some teach periods where we traded and started to get some of these looks that we'll get in season that are maybe a little bit different than what we see from each other. Um, and what's funny is we're, we're trading guys that are, you know, definitely great ball players for us, but we're moving them to the other side of the ball or moving them to the other team, the look team, so they can give us a great look. And I think guys really embraced that today. You know, you had DJ Johnson and Brandon Dorless over there being, uh, you know, our opponent. Right, you had Terrence Ferguson, you had Mo being being our opponent, and they embraced those roles and really made us better in those periods. Whether it's quarterback or backup punt returner, what, how do you go about the process of figuring out who slots where? What's the data that you're looking at? Yeah, everyday evaluation. I mean, we chart everything. We we watch every single period. Again, the only reason I'm not really talking about with you guys, I don't know why that's an advantage for us. Right. If I felt like it was an advantage, I would tell you guys. You, I don't. Right. You're gonna take it up till three o'clock on. September 3rd. You guys yeah. see that first snap? Yeah, we'll see who's out there on the field. I'm not playing quarterback, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Coach, you've been to stack good practices on top of each other. You feel like you did that this week? Yeah, I think we've had good practices, but we're nowhere near what we need to, to uh, I mean, we still got a lot of time here before this game and a lot of time for prep. And I feel like um, some people, you know, hit the brakes whenever they get through fall camp and they kind of relax. And, you know, we're still preparing for a game. You still have to be in football shape. You still have to condition to a certain level, and those are things you can't really back off on. So is this the end of fall camp and now game prep starts? Or has we're that still our... practicing. I mean, uh, give it a different label if you want. Sure. We're practicing for a game, you know, but uh, that's what we're doing. Can you guys change anything what that you do over the next week as you get more into game prep? Does that look any different for you guys in, in schedule of practices? Yeah, just really more about how the periods are set up within the practice, what looks we have to make sure we see for our opponents. Um, if we can get something that we already do from, from the other side of the ball, we want to do that. But if there's something we don't, then we want to try to recreate that through practice. Bill might uh, join practice this week. What did you get out of that experience? What did the team get out of that experience? I just think that every one of us at Oregon is so extremely blessed to have a guy like Phil Knight and Penny Knight associated with our program and what they do for our program, uh, not just from a, a philanthropy uh, standpoint for our team, but really the example they've set for what hard work gets you. Um, and I think our guys really respect him for that. What was his messaging? Did he speak to the team? He did, yeah. He talked to our guys for a little bit and just told him how much he supports him and is ready to go see him go compete and, and uh, put on a great performance. I know you guys track Havoc great. I'm curious now. You've had several weeks to kind of analyze that. Are there some guys who are normally at the top of that list? Uh, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head. You know, I think in general our defense has done a good job of creating that havoc in practice. Um, but I have to go back and look at it to see if one person sticks out. Less than 10 days until the game. Do you feel pretty confident about where you guys are in, in terms of development and getting into the systems? Yeah, I think we know what we're supposed to do. Um, we're, on, we're on top of things when it comes to our job. I think every one of us want to use every single minute, you know, for our preparation. So, you know, an old term in coaching is the haze in the barn. We're not in that. We're not at that point, you know, and we're not going to be at that point. We're going to use every minute all the way up until kickoff to prepare to get better. Talking to the players yesterday, they said they started to kind of shift their mentality to like really focusing on the mental prep for this game week. Have you kind of seen them focus a little bit more on like what mentality they want to have like officially getting into season next week? Yeah, you know, um, yes and no. Like we're still doing our get real sessions. That's still a big part of what we do. And that's a, that's a lot about mental warfare and our mental prep for games. Um, we're going to still carry those over as we go into the season. So I think that's a piece of it. Um, you know, on days like today where you're wearing spiders, it's not as much about the physical, it's about the mental. We want to make our guys think a little bit more and we challenge them that. You know, one thing we we've talked about is volume reflects confidence. So if you know what to do, right, and you can verbalize that, your teammates are going to be confident in you and, and you ex executing your job. Looks like Brian Addison's managed to get a couple of interceptions during the course of uh, camp. And just what is he, how do you evaluate his performance over these last three weeks? Yeah, maybe more than anything for Brian, I'm just excited about his leadership. You know, he's been one of these guys that will stand up for the team and demand a lot, uh, also demands a lot of himself. I uh, think he would tell you, hey, there's a lot of things that he can continue to improve on, but uh, Brian's been a, a shining light in just the way he works and the way he prepares every day. One of the young guys up front who got some opportunities when other guys were limited was Josh Connerly. And yeah. Obviously a lot of hype around him given his recruitment. But how game ready do you feel he is for, you know, how, how pretty prepared do you feel like he is to step into major college football at this point? I, I think Josh is going to be a really good player for the Ducks. I mean, I think he's going to be a phenomenal player for us. He's shown that he has a worker's mentality, he has a growth mindset. Um, when his time comes, I think he'll be prepared for it, you know. Um, and, and that could be relatively soon. We'll see. With Bennett and Jamal at Star, what do you see them bringing to kind of different to that position? 
Terms you know, of- Jamal's obviously a little bit bigger, right? And uh, I think he can b- bring a, a brand of physicality there at the position. Bennett, you know, is a little bit more savvy from a, um, you know, he moves more like a DB at times. I think you'll see that. But both of them are really good yin and yang to each other. That being said, they have a similar skill set. They understand what we're trying to accomplish. Um, you know, they both do, you know, really good things at that position for us. We've, we've seen Braden Zolkowski. I know he's, I think he's a walk-on. He's not practicing, but he's been around the team, been helping with some offensive line drills. I'm just curious what, what his role is and kind of how you, what, what he's been doing. Same thing you just said. You know, help the team any way you can. Andrew, as far sure. as the next five to eight days, what does that look for you guys as you get ready to, you know, start traveling to Atlanta? Do you have more scrimmages in mind? I mean, what do those practices look like for you? Very similar to a, like a normal game week. So we're, we're approaching. We'll steal an extra Tuesday practice that we would normally only have one in a game week. We'll steal an extra Monday practice. Um, we'll start to, you know, do true prep for Georgia and, and uh, start working that way. How familiar are you with this alter ego slash mentality that Justin Flo has, this heme character of his? I'm familiar with it. How would you describe that to somebody? Who- I love Justin's passion and energy for the game, and he carries it over into everything that he does, and it's, uh, it's fun to coach. I, I really enjoy having Justin on our team. He's a great piece for us. When players can take that kind of alter ego and like almost mentality, do you feel like that kind of helps them? I think each person, you know, gets prepared for the game in a different way. And Justin, one of his greatest strengths is his passion, right? Uh, I I would say this for almost every person. Sometimes your greatest strength can become your greatest weakness too, right? So he has to do a great job of controlling that and maintaining that. And Justin's done a good job of that. I think Tosh said Last question. Tosh said during the spring that as he was rehabbing from those injuries, you kind of had to hold him back a little bit to save oh, yeah. him from himself. If, if it was up to Justin, he'd be running around with a boot out there on the practice field. So the guy loves football. Is, is that no longer the case? Is he kind of just off the leash? No longer the case. I wouldn't say he's off the leash, but no longer the case. <laughs> right, Appreciate you guys. Good.